Welcome to another tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to change any date entered into your Microsoft Access database into a future date. This is handy for appointments, follow-ups, upcoming payments, and lots of stuff like that. For example, if today is, let's say, December 15th, and I type in 12 slash 20, then the database will change it to 1220 coming up later this year, right? In a couple of days. However, if I type in three slash five, I want the database to change it to 2023, March 5th of next year, because it's going to be a future date. No sense in entering in a past appointment date. And that's what we're going to learn how to do in today's class. Today's question comes from Jana in Point Pleasant, New Jersey, one of my platinum members. She says, I have a database where I enter lots of appointments. These dates will always be in the future. If it's currently December and I type in 220, February 20th, then the database assumes I mean 220 of this year. Is there any way to make it advance to the next year if the date is in the past? Yep, this is going to involve a little teeny, teeny, tiny bit of programming. That's why I marked this as a developer video, but don't let that scare you. If you've never done any VBA programming before, go watch this video. It's about 20 minutes long. It teaches you everything you need to know. Don't be scared. It's only a couple of lines of code we need today, and I'll show you exactly where to put it. We're also going to use an after update event. This is an event that runs whenever a field is changed or updated. So go watch this video if you've never done that before. We're also going to use an if then statement. And we're going to use the date serial function, which allows us to manipulate the different components of the date to build a new date. And finally, we're going to use the year, month, and day functions to get those different components, to get those pieces of the date to put together a new date value. So go watch all of these videos if you don't know what any of this stuff is. They're all free. They're on my website. They're on my YouTube channel. I'll put links down below. You can click on them to go watch those. Go watch them and then come on back. Okay, so here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free database you can download off my website. And let's pretend that this customer sends, let's pretend this is an appointment date. In fact, here we'll cheat. We're just going to change the, just change the label. We're not going to change the whole field itself. We'll just change this guy here to appointment date. All right. But it's still customer sends. You get what I'm doing, right? Okay. So I got a date here. This is the customer's appointment. Now, it's currently December 14th, 2022. So if I type in 1230, no problem. And I'm using the ISO date standard, which is year, month, day. Want to learn more about that? I'll put a link down below. Now, if I want to type in an appointment date, let's say this guy's appointment's in a couple weeks after the first. So let's say it's January 15. Okay. Hit tab. Access assumes you mean January 15th, the current year. It always assumes the current year. And that's annoying if that field is always going to be used for things that happen in the future, an upcoming appointment, an upcoming payment, a follow-up date, that kind of stuff. You don't always want to have to go in here and remember to type in, okay, 2023-01-15 or whatever, whatever format you're using. This works regardless. All right, so how do we do that? Well, this fortunately is one of those videos where if you watched all the other videos that I told you to watch at the top of the class, then you could figure this out on your own. This is one of those Lego videos. I'm going to show you how to put together all the pieces of the other parts and molecular structures and things in a different way. Okay, nothing, nothing new here. This is just assembling in a different way. Okay, so design view. Go to the customer sense field. We're going to use the after update event. You could use before update if you wanted to, but after update's fine. This happens after the user types in that value. My code builder opens up here. Okay. Now, if the user types in a date in the future, that's fine. Leave it. All right. If they type in 2-15-23, leave it alone. Okay. But if customer sense, that's my date field, is less than or equal to today's date, then what do we want to do? We're going to add a year to it. Now, we have to be able to get the component parts of that customer sense date. So I can take the year and add one to it but keep the same month and day, okay? So what I'm going to say is customer sense equals, now how do we put together our own date? Well, that's the date serial function, all right? Date serial takes three bits of information. The first thing it wants to know is what year? Well, 
I want next year. Okay, so I'm going to say the year of today's date plus one. That says give me the year of today's date. It's a date function, right? Comma, what month do I want? I want the month of whatever date the user typed in. Customer sense. Comma, same day. Day of customer sense. Okay, close that all up. End if. And that's it. You're done. I'm serious when I tell you, folks, that, that VBA programming ain't scary. And once you get a, a, just a few commands down, you can really do some cool stuff. So what's going to happen is the user going to type in a value in the customer sense. It's going to come into here. Now, when they type that value in, Access is automatically going to add the year to it if they don't specify a year. Okay? So it's going to say if that year, if that date they typed in is less than or equal to today, then... And you could, if you wanted to, you can make it just less than today if you want to. That's up to you. If they type in, if you're typing in a future appointment date and they have an annual appointment, right? If I type in 12-14 and it is 12-14, I want it to assume maybe next year. But that's, that's completely up to you. Okay? So at this point, we're going to say, okay, they typed in, let's say, October 1st, which is in the past. Because Axe is going to add 2022 to it. So it's going to be, okay, so this date is in the past. We're going to build our own date using date serial. I want the current year plus one, which is 2023, because today, today is 2022, remember? Okay. Then the month of whatever the user typed in and the day of whatever the user typed in. And that's how you build that date. Save it. Let's give it a quick compile, debug compile, just to make sure. Come back over here. I'm going to close my form. Open it back up again. And again, remember, today is December 14th, so I'm going to type in 12-20, and I'm good. I got 12-20-2022, which is right. Now, let's say I type in January 4th. Boom. Look at that. 2023, January 4th. See that? And if you have years further in the future, if the user specifies the year, like 2025 to 4, It'll keep it because it's not in the past. It's only going to modify dates that get entered into the past. All right, so if I come in here and type in 2039, it is going to change it to next year, 39. So that is one problem with this method is that if you need to be able to go back and retroactively change dates to a past date, you'll have to either make another field, go into the table directly, or you can watch my extended cut where I cover how to do that. We'll make a function for a future date. Here it is right here. If you want to type it in, if you know where to put it, I'm going to show you where to put it. You put this in a global module, and then you can use it for any field, and I'll show you how to do that. But then we'll make a future date to function. What that will do is it will allow the user to specify any year they want. It'll say, okay, if the user doesn't specify a year, then assume either this year if it's in the future or next year if it's in the past, just like we just did. But... If they do specify a year, it will keep that year. Okay, and I'll show you how to do that in the extended cut. Plus, gold members, this is all in the code vault for you, so you can go and copy and paste it. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos for both Tech Help and Fast Tips videos. There's lots of them. There's like 300 and some plus of them now. Gold members, of course, can download these databases, and you get the code vault. So, what are you waiting for? Join today. I hope you learned some stuff. And this has been your tech help video for today. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. How do you become a member? Click on the Join button below the video. After you click the Join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks.
Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full length courses found on my website, not just for access to. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1, and it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website, and you can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.